Hello and welcome to Apostolic Voice. I'm your host, Ryan French. Did you know that the month of March is Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month? I had no idea until I was scrolling on Facebook and I saw a very nice family post a beautiful tribute to their pastor's wife in honor of Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month. And I thought that was a wonderful thing because I do believe that pastor's wives are underappreciated and underrecognized. And so it reminded me of an article that I wrote many years ago called Support Your Local Pastor's Wife. You can find that at ryanafrench.com. It'll be the featured article right now uh, connected to this podcast. And so I want to talk to us today about how we can support our local pastor's wife, what the role of a pastor's wife is, because There's often a lot of confusion about what that role is, and then we're going to just talk about ways, practical ways, that we can lift up a pastor's wife, and of course, that blesses the entire ministry family and the entire church as well. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being a part. We love you. We'll talk to you in about 60 seconds. Let me tell you about Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast, and best of all, it's absolutely free to get started. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple, and all the other platforms as well. It's important because it's it's hard to get a podcast started. I've tried in the past. It's hard to get it off the ground. It can be very complicated. Anchor does a great job of making it user-friendly and kind of keeping things in one place for you, which just helps you organize your thoughts. And as you get better and better at it, Anchor is just a great central location for you to have all your workflow. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. If you've been thinking about podcasting at all, download their free Anchor app. Just go to anchor.fm to get started. You can also find their app in Apple and Android devices. All right, welcome back, and happy Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month. We're coming in on the tail end of it. Arguably, pastor's wives are the most underappreciated, stereotyped, overworked, unpaid people in any church. I believe that pastor's wives are especially vulnerable to criticism, disrespect, and just impoliteness in general. And, And I'm not even getting into the issues of stress that her husband faces as the pastor, and that stress bleeds over into their marriage and their relationship. Often, pastor's wives live under the umbrella of insinuated, and sometimes not so insinuated, sometimes it's just overtly stated, congregational demands. Let me give you some examples. There's all kinds of unrealistic expectations and and contradictory expectations that defy logic that people place on a pastor's wife. Dress to perfection, raise perfect children, always smile, be a church secretary, have unlimited time for everyone, lead every ladies' ministry, attend every church function, host lavishly, entertain pleasantly, sing, play an instrument, teach Sunday school, be the ideal wife, remember every detail, work, clean, organize, decorate, keep a model home, babysit, and in some cases, they're expected or they're forced by necessity to work a secular job as well. As you can tell, uh, all of these pressures and expectations are unrealistic. Pastors' wives live in a glass house, and, and they're under the constant realization that every move they make is scrutinized. Beyond that, they're criticized by people who have opposing judgments, and I'll I'll give you an example. If they dress too fancy, they're unapproachable, but they're embarrassing if they dress too plain. Those same conflated standards are are usually applied to their house, their car, their children's clothing. If if their house is too nice, uh, that's not good, and if their house is 
not nice enough. That isn't good. Same with their car. And, and if they lead too many programs, they're accused of not making room for other leaders. But if they don't lead enough programs, they aren't pulling their weight. And, and this is especially true if they're musical. Music programs and music departments in any church are always fraught with their own pressures, expectations, and, and struggles, <laughs> to say the least. But that's another podcast for another day. And, and most of these, these negative things and negative information is filtered back to a pastor's wife via the, and I'm using quotation marks here, the, the well-meaning grapevine. You might think that your criticisms and, and um, um, constructive criticism that you give privately of a pastor's wife, you might think that that never gets back to her, but I promise you it, it does. It, it finds a way to get back. So to be very clear, there are many blessings and benefits that come along with being a pastor's wife. I'm not trying to turn the role of a pastor's wife into a, a victim. I know it kind of sounds like I was. It's definitely not a, a victimized role. It can be in very, very toxic situations, but normally it's not. There, there are perks that come with being a pastor's wife, just like there are perks that come with being a, a preacher's kid. But there are also problems that come along as well. In ideal situations, pastors' wives are treated with extra courtesy, respect, kindness. They receive generosity, grace, understanding, and special consideration. Usually in a church, there, there's a mixed bag of goodness from some people and ugliness from others towards the pastor's wife. I pray that kindness always outweighs the criticism towards pastors' wives, because if it doesn't, there is tremendous emotional pain inflicted on a pastor's wife's heart. It goes without saying that this also impacts her husband's ability to minister effectively. The spoken and unspoken pressures take a toll, and, and usually there's very little external evidence. What I mean by that is they're not going to wear it on their sleeve most of the time. They're not going to have a a sign that they walk into church with that says, you know, I've, I've been mistreated this week. I've been lied about this week. I've, I've had uh, incredible pressure on me this week. No, they, they, they take it with a smile and they do their best to, to hide the pressure that they feel, but it manifests itself in, in other ways. And I've spent my whole life in and around ministry. So I, I know this to be true instinctively. I'm a preacher's kid. I grew up in a preacher's home. But I don't just know this anecdotally. Surveys do corroborate what I've what I've understood to be true uh, just instinctively throughout my life. So I want to give you some of these stats. And I know stats cause us to fall asleep. And I don't want you to snore. Don't get too comfortable. But these stats are are staggering. They really are. And, and we should look at them. They they highlight the stress that pastors' wives feel in their role, and it, it shows us how desperately pastors' wives need the support of the saints, of the church, and certainly of other ministry families. Now, these statistics are not just taken from apostolic Pentecostal churches. These statistics cross denominational lines. I do believe that it holds uh, relatively true within apostolic churches as well. So they ask pastors' wives anonymously, by the way, and the reason it's important, important to ask questions like this anonymously is because ministry is more likely to, to give an, an open answer when they know their name's not going to be attached to it, because no one wants to be embarrassed by by stating the real difficulties they face. So these were anonymous questions. The first set of questions was about friendship. So here's what they said. 80% of pastors' wives feel left out and unappreciated by church members. Wow. That's eight out of every 10 pastors' wives. 80 out of every 100 pastors' wives 
feel left out and unappreciated by church members. 56% of pastors' wives say they have no close friends in the church. Now they move to ministry. Overwhelmingly, pastors' wives feel like unpaid assistants. That was their words. We feel as though we are unpaid assistants in the church. And, and yet so many have lots more to offer in the ministry, and they need encouragement for their role. Look at this statistic. 84% of pastors' wives feel unqualified and discouraged in their roles. 80% of pastors' wives feel pressured to serve in ways that do not fit their gifts. Now, this is important to understand. They're not saying they don't want to serve. They're saying they are pressured to serve in areas of the church where they are not especially gifted, and they feel as though their true gifts are not being utilized because of unspoken pressure in the church, sometimes overtly spoken pressure. 60% of pastors' wives express the need to further their training so they could serve better. In other words, they don't have resources. They don't have places they can go to be trained, encouraged, lifted up. Uh, now they ask questions about marriage. 80% of pastors' wives believe their spouse, their husband, is overworked. 80% of pastors' wives wish their spouse would choose another profession because of the strain and the stress. 50%, now this one's heartbreaking, 50% of their marriages will end in divorce. 94% of clergy families feel the pressure of pastoral ministry. This, this, is, this is truly heartbreaking because what we're seeing is when pastors' wives feel the liberty to speak openly and anonymously, they are expressing tremendous pain. Most of the pain that is expressed could be alleviated if they were just supported properly. I believe most of the tension that saints and pastors' wives feel comes from a general lack of biblical understanding about pastors' wives. And I believe this stems from the startling reality that the Bible has almost nothing directly to say about the role of a pastor's wife. This leaves many people to simply insert their own version of what they believe a pastor's wife should be into their local church's culture, structure, and tradition. This creates rigid performance templates that many pastors' wives find soul-crushing because it doesn't take into account their individual giftings. This is very, this is very important to understand. Most of us believe, uh, if we haven't really thought about it much, that surely there's got to be a page somewhere, at least in the New Testament, somewhere in, in Paul's letters, there's got to be a page describing at least a fairly good outline of what the role of a pastor's wife is, but actually, actually the Bible is pretty silent on this issue. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Hey, I know commercial breaks are frustrating, but I do want to pause and let you know you can financially support this apostolic Pentecostal programming by giving as little as 99 cents a month. You can give $4.99 a month or even as much as $9.99 per month by going to www.anchor.fm forward slash apostolic voice forward slash support. Also, please consider giving this podcast five stars and a quick review on iTunes. It really helps us out in the search engines people use to find podcasts when you give us a like and a review. Thank you so much for listening, and thank you for your support. God bless. Okay, welcome back. What is the role of a pastor's wife? What is the role? 
You know, the Bible doesn't provide explicit teaching on the role of a pastor's wife. Now, that doesn't mean it denies a pastor's wife a ministry role within the church. Listen, there are all kinds of essential ministry roles in local churches that the Bible doesn't spell out instructions for. Outreach director, student pastor, Sunday school director, children's ministry director, secretary, to name that's just to name a few. We have all kinds of ministries that are valuable, viable ministries in the local church, but the Bible doesn't give us a template for them. The same is true with the pastor's wife. So the biblical role of being a pastor's wife is best understood from what Scripture teaches about being a woman, a wife, a mother, and a follower of Christ, a Christian, with her own unique God-given gifts. Now listen to this very carefully. This is going to rub some people the wrong way. Biblically speaking, a pastor's wife's primary role is to be the wife of the pastor. I know that sounds a little too simplistic, but that is her first role in God's eyes, and I'm going to say it again because it's so important. Biblically speaking, a pastor's wife's primary role is to be the wife of the pastor. Let your pastor's wife be a wife, and let me just go ahead and add this early on. Let her be a wife and a mother first, or a grandmother, or whatever the case may be. Let me take us to Genesis chapter 2, verse number 18, and we're going to answer the question, what's a help me? What's a help me? Because as I said a moment ago, to understand the role of a pastor's wife, we first have to define the role of womanhood in general. So here we have in the book of beginnings, Genesis, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And then skip down to verse 24. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Help me, help me. What is a help me? That's a hard one because in in a modern English context, we struggle to carry that that language over into our, our way of thinking. In the Hebrew, the word for helper or help meet in the King James is, is actually the Hebrew word azer, and it's always used in the Old Testament in the context of vitally important and powerful acts of rescue and support. The majority of its 21 occurrences in the Old Testament depict God helping humans. So they're descriptions of God. Since God himself can be a helper, it's clear that neither the word azer nor the role of a helper implies some kind of inherent inferiority. In other words, the Bible is not describing the woman as inferior to the man. It means the helper plays a supporting role rather than bearing primary responsibility for a task. In the Hebrew text, helper is modified by what we would say in in English, suitable for him, connecto, which seems to express the notion of complementary rather than identity. The help looked for isn't just assistance in the man's daily work or the procreation of children, even though these things are included, but the mutual support companionship provides is what the word a suitable helper for him means. It denotes function. So a helpmeet is designed as the perfect counterpart for the man. The woman was neither inferior nor superior, but she was alike and equal to the man in her personhood while different and unique in her function. The function of Eve was not less valuable to the maintenance of the garden or the furthering of humankind, but the shared responsibilities involved each, both Adam and Eve, accomplishing different but complementary tasks. The Hebrew usage of the word azer denotes far more than the English term helper can offer because the term indicates an indispensable companion. I'm reiterating this because it's so important. 
Defining the specific divinely inspired purpose for a woman is vital for understanding her role as a wife because the two are unmistakably linked. They're intertwined. In light of Genesis 2.18, a pastor's wife is called to be an indispensable companion and helper to her husband, meaning a pastor's wife's role will gradate, it will change based on the particular strengths, needs, and personalities of the couple in their oneness of flesh. So in any marriage, and certainly this, this applies to a pastoral marriage, Two people bring their different personalities into the marriage, their their different strengths and their needs, and of course, their, their different weaknesses as well. And so when a couple, a pastor and a pastor's wife, when they come together in marriage, the role of a pastor's wife will be different based on her strengths, based on the strengths of her husband, and vice versa. This is very, very important. Now, of course, we understand a pastor's wife must adhere to the same biblical standards as all other Christian women. She serves God and family while leading in various influential roles. That's a Proverbs 31 woman. Her virtue is praiseworthy. That's also Proverbs 31. Most importantly, she is is a person who fears the Lord. Because she reverences the Lord, she'll walk in the beauty of holiness. That's Psalms 96, 9. Godly women must be given to hospitality, 1 Peter 4, 9. She must walk in the spirit and not the flesh, Romans 8, 1. And, and now that we've kind of given a very basic biblical template of womanhood and, and being a wife, we can discuss practical ways to support your local pastor's wife understanding that we should value her unique gifts as well as her husband's unique gifts and help them to complement one another and help a pastor's wife find the role for her in the church that is the most effective, fulfilling, and also the role that would do the most good for the church and her family and for her as well. Right, now we can talk about nine ways to support your pastor's wife, your local pastor's wife. And I believe if you're still listening to this episode, you want to support your local pastor's wife or, or you would have tuned out a long time ago. So let me give you number one. Graciously allow her to prioritize her family. She loves you and she cares for your soul. But the needs of her family are and should be her primary concern. Don't resent her for concentrating on the needs of her family above the needs of your family. That's her responsibility. That's her God given calling. And it doesn't diminish her love and concern. Number two, appreciate her. pastor's wife, but just recognize you don't really know her and you don't really know her gifting. Your pastor's wife has different giftings and you should appreciate her for those. Number three, celebrate her strengths and be understanding of her weaknesses. She strives for perfection and excellence. I promise you she does. She strives, but like everyone else, she will not always obtain it. Rather than exploit or criticize her weakness, do your best to lift burdens off her shoulders that don't fall within her areas of expertise. If uh, if you can help 
lift her up in areas where she's not strong, that will give her the freedom to thrive in areas where she is strong. Don't just pounce because she has areas that are perfect. Instead, celebrate the areas where she is very talented. Number four, give her the benefit of the doubt. So give her the benefit of the doubt just as you have others do. Don't assume the worst. Don't, don't assume that your perception is reality. Maybe, maybe you thought that she slighted you. took that as for being upset at you. Always get the benefit of the doubt because you don't always know the whole picture. Number five, love your children and your grandchildren despite their imperfections. I'm going to talk about this more in this podcast. If you will love your children and your grandchildren in the way that you want her to love your children and your grandchildren, it will be a tremendous blessing to her it will lift a tremendous load off her shoulders. Number six, don't belittle or speak critically about her husband to her or anyone else. If you have a problem with the pastor, speak with the pastor. Don't go to the pastor's wife when you have a problem with the pastor. This is a, well, it's unbiblical, uh, it's unethical, and it's unhelpful. If you have a concern that you need to speak to the pastor about, speak to the pastor about it. Number seven, refuse to speak critically about her behind her back. If someone else tries to speak negatively about your pastor's wife, kindly remove yourself from the conversation. Idle words almost always filter back to the offended party. If you have a legitimate grievance against your pastor's wife, If you have legitimate, constructive criticism that you'd like to give in love, if you have a real concern, broach it with her privately. Approach her with kindness, approach her with love, and do it in a way that will build her up and not tear her down. Number eight, advocate on her behalf and speak positively into her life at every possible opportunity. I promise you, Your pastor's wife doesn't receive nearly as much positive affirmation as you think she does. Choose to be an encourager, not a discourager in her life. If you will speak life into her heart, it will bless her, it will bless the ministry, it will bless you, and it will bless the church. Number nine, pray for her regularly. Intercede with God to give her strength. Your prayer cover will have a tremendous spiritual impact on her heart. This is probably the most valuable thing you could do for your pastor's wife and your pastor and his family. But don't just pray for your pastor. Pray for your pastor's wife as well, that God will help her and bless her. A pastor's family is the first line of defense against the church. When the enemy starts coming in like a flood, they will attack the pastor's family, often the pastor's wife, first. You be a prayer covering for her that will help ward off those attacks. These are nine things that you can do right now. You can start doing these nine simple things right now. Write them down in your Bible. Read them over and over again. Go to RyanAFrench.com. Look for the articles. Uh, support your local pastor's wife, write down, read these nine things you can do, get them in your heart, get them in your spirit. I promise you it will bless your church. It will change the atmosphere and the environment of your church. It will change your heart and the atmosphere of your home and your spiritual life if you incorporate this kind of support into your Christian walk. By supporting your pastor's wife, you're creating an atmosphere of peace and unity in your church. It encourages your pastor, and it gives him a sense of stability. All of this contributes to a climate of revival and goodwill in your church. 
God will bless you because you're being a blessing. I promise you, God will bless you because you are a blessing and you have a loving, kind spirit. Go support your local pastor's wife. Find her and tell her, Happy Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month. Let her know how much you love her, and it's going to be a blessing. Thank you for listening. Until next time.